Hello, this is Mr. Beck. This series of tutorials is designed for my 8th grade Android programming class. Uh, at this point, we've learned to interface Eclipse with Android. Um, if you can execute uh, a program or an Android application from Eclipse and get it to run within an emulator or on a physical device, um, if you are a beginner with uh, the Android operating system, this may be a good set of tutorials to work through. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to work with the action bar on top. We're going to work with uh, some user interface elements. We're going to stack buttons on top of a canvas here. And I think the buttons will do things like change the style of our paint object or maybe the size of our paint object. And up here along the top for the action bar, we'll probably have some icons that will do things like modify the color of the paint object and clear the screen. Okay, so that's where we're headed with this. Um, in this video, I'm just going to talk about how to get the starter, the starting project. And uh, we're just going to take a look at what's available within that project. Okay, so um, if you go to my GitHub account here, which is github.com slash Android teacher. This is what it looks like right now. Our school district recently made GitHub uh, a lot easier to use. So um, I've started using that with my class. Didn't used to be this easy. It used to have all kinds of elements that were blocked and stuff, but this is great. So uh, you'll find somewhere on my GitHub account a program called Paint Demo. Um, it, you should have eGit installed within Eclipse. And uh, you go ahead and just import this project into Eclipse from GitHub. If you're not sure how to do that, take a minute and uh, research up how to install eGit with Eclipse. And uh, once you've got all that set up, it's very easy to pull uh, projects from GitHub into Eclipse and then run them on an emulator that are Android based. So uh, here we are, and I'm just going to talk about uh, what's I've already done that. And you should uh, have paint demo then sitting in your Eclipse workspace. If you're in my class and you have a problem with that, uh, please let me know and we'll work it out so that we can get that project situated. Okay, so there are three classes here. There's a main activity, and I'm just going to talk about what's inside of our classes right now, our important classes. Canvas thread, don't worry about. Okay, we're not going to modify that at all. Um, we have main activity and we have panel. Okay, and it's important to recognize two things here. All right, inside of main activity, we are going to recognize touch events. All right, and we'll, every time the user touches the screen, we'll be gathering X and Y coordinates using on touch event, which is something we've already done in class at this point. And we'll be now working with the action bar, okay? And this is on create option menu down here. This uh, sets up our action bar. It sets up the icons that appear at the top of the application. And once again, when I say action bar, I'm referring to this, everything that appears above the blue line here, okay? We can set icons up here and uh, they will have specific functionality all right uh, we'll be setting that up and responding to events there within the main activity class so this main activity class kind of has the function of collecting input from the user all right that's what it does and uh, the panel class now okay this is a view that's set up. And if you want to see how this panel class is referenced and why it works, okay, you go to the layout folder and you take a look at activity underscore main dot XML inside of the layout folder. Take a look at that and you'll see how I'm referencing this panel class. This panel class has one primary function, okay, on draw. It is a canvas that we are drawing to, okay, and we have a paint object. And we're going to modify that paint object to do different things. Now, on draw is executed in rapid succession um, within an Android application like this. Okay, it happens over and over again. It's a it's a screen refresh, right? Um, so you can think in terms of uh, frames per second here. That's how quickly on draw is being executed. And uh, so this is kind of like it's a loop. All right, that uh, occurs over and over again. And what I have set up at the top of the class is I have a paint object, okay? And here's what this paint object does, okay? We're using the method set alpha 
red, green, blue, A, R, G, B. 255 means it's not transparent at all. That's our alpha, okay? 255 in the R section here, that's for red. So this has got 255 in red, and then green and blue are zero. So this is drawing a red dot right now. Alpha, red, green, blue. Um, so our paint object, it, hasn't, it isn't drawing at this point, but we're setting the paint up so that it's a certain color. Very simple, okay? So we're setting the paint object at every time there's a refresh to a specific color, okay? Um, and then we're at the end of the draw method right now. We are drawing a circle. And the draw circle method has a couple different arguments. This is the x coordinate that we're drawing at. This is the y coordinate that we're drawing at. This is the radius of the circle. And this is the paint object we're going to use to draw the circle. So we have a red circle, right, that's being drawn with a radius of 30. And it's being drawn at the coordinate 200, 200. All right. And you can see here that that's what we have, a red circle, 30 in radius, drawn at 200, 200. When I click on the screen, absolutely nothing happens. All right, so that is the, uh, the gist of this particular program. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go in and we're going to start to make some changes to it. Uh, the first change we're going to make is we're going to modify this so that when the user touches the screen, it draws another circle where the user has touched the screen. So thanks for watching video one. You'll find video two linked underneath this video, or you can go to the web page that is referenced here uh, to find the complete series. Welcome Thank you for watching. Welcome to this spoken tutorial on block diagram creation using Xfig. In this tutorial, we will explain how to create block diagrams of the type given below. We will see the tools required for this purpose. I shall use Xfig, a block diagram manipulation tool. I am using version 3.2, patch level 5. I will also use the terminal and the PDF browser. I am creating this tutorial on Mac OS X. XFIG works on Linux and Windows also. Installation on Linux is the easiest of all. The procedure to use XFIG is the same in all three. It is recommended to use a three button mouse for XFIG, but one or two button mouse can also be configured to work. The user manual for XFIG is available on the web. Let us see it. We can see the introduction to XFIG in this page. We can see the table of contents of this manual here. Let us click it. We can see the details of the people who created XFIG here. Let us see this page. I will now explain the screen configuration for this tutorial. It has the slides, XFIG, Internet Browser, Firefox, and the Terminal. This is the command I use to invoke XFIG on Mac. These are arranged in an overlapping fashion for easy switch from one to the other. The listener can easily see the switch happening. No need for guesswork. Let us start with XFIG. The left hand side of XFIG worksheet has the drawing mode panel. The buttons on top half of this panel can be used to create different objects. The ones in the bottom are used to work with them. Using the buttons at the top, one, one can carry out file and edit operations. The space in the center is known as the canvas. This is where the figure will be created. Let us now get started with drawing. The first thing I will do is to put the grids on the canvas. I do this by clicking the grid mode button at the bottom. We can choose different grid sizes. I will choose the middle one. 
grids help align the different objects that we would place. In this tutorial, by clicking, I mean clicking the left mouse button and releasing it. Similarly, selecting or choosing a button would mean that you have to click it with the left mouse. If a different action is required, I will state it explicitly. As our diagram should have a box, let us choose the box symbol with sharp corners from the left hand side panel. We will go to the place where we would want to place the box. We will click the mouse at this point. This selects the northwest corner of the box. Move the mouse to the opposite end until the box is of the size we want. Once the box is of right size, we can click the mouse once again. The box is now created. We will now explain how to use the edit feature of x -Fig. Using this, we will increase the thickness of the box. Let us press the edit button in the left hand panel. We see that all the key points of the box are displayed. Let us click on any one of these points and thus select the box. A dialog box opens. We will take the mouse to the width box. Make sure that the mouse pointer stays within the box. Let us delete the default value of 1. The contents of this box cannot be changed if the mouse is not inside the box. If the mouse moves away at any time of entry in the box, please bring it inside and continue typing. Let us now enter 2. We click the down. Let me show you this. Click the down. And leave the dialog box. We see that the thickness of the box has increased. We would now want to enter lines with arrows. Let us choose the polyline button from the left hand side panel. The panel at the bottom is known as the attributes panel. Using the buttons present in this panel, the parameters of each object may be changed. The number of buttons change depending on the chosen object. Let us select the arrow mode button from the attributes panel. Let us choose the second option in the dialog box as this would give an arrow at the end point. Let us click the arrow type button. In the window that appears, we select the arrow head of our choice. Let us click at the point where we want the line to start. Let us move the mouse to the end point of the desired line. Let us now click there with middle mouse button. The line is created with an arrow. Remember, you have to press the middle button to complete the arrow, not the left or right button. If you make a mistake, please click the edit and press undo. Let us draw another line at the output of the box by copying. Choose the copy button from the left hand side panel. Choose the line. Move the mouse to the destination and click. The line is copied. Let us put some text now. Let us click the text box indicated by T from the left hand side panel. Let us choose the font size of the text. Let us click the text size button from the attributes panel and obtain a dialog window. Let us move the mouse to the value box and keep the mouse there. Let us delete the default value of 12 and enter 16. Let us choose the button set. The dialog box gets closed and the text size is now shown as 16 in the attributes panel. We will center align the text. Let us click the text just 
button in the attributes panel. A dialog box opens. Let us choose the middle one for center alignment. Let us click at the center of the box. I will type plant and click the mouse. The text is created. I can move the text with the move key on the left hand side panel if required. Let us now save this figure. Let us click the file button at the top left hand corner of XFig. Hold and drag the mouse to save and release. As this is the first time XFig asks for the file name. We can choose the directory and then the file name. Let us type the name as block and choose save. The file gets saved as block.fig. You can see that name at the top. Let us now export the file. Let us click the file button once again, hold and drag the mouse to export. Click the box next to language, hold and drag the mouse to PDF and release the key to select the PDF format. Now click the export button. We get the file block.pdf. Let us open this file through the command open blog.pdf from the terminal. We now have the block diagram that we wanted. We have completed our objective. We have the figure we want. We have an assignment for you. Substitute the box with different objects. Create a rectangle using polyline. Change the size and the direction of the arrows in the figure. Move the text line and box to different locations. Export the file in APS format and view it. View the file block.fig in an editor and identify different components. Create entirely different block diagrams. We have now come to the end of this tutorial. Spoken Tutorial is part of the Talk to a Teacher project, supported by the National Mission on Education through ICT, MHRD, Government of India. More information on this mission is available at spoken-tutorial.org slash nmeict-intro. I have downloaded a few more web pages. The website for the Spoken Tutorial project is http colon slash slash spoken dash tutorial dot org. This project is explained by the video available at this link. What is a Spoken Tutorial? At spoken dash tutorial dot org slash wiki, we have listed the fast tools supported by our projects. Let us also see the page devoted to XFIG. We welcome your participation and also your feedback. This is Kannan Mogdalya signing off. Thanks for joining.